I got these axle tubes all spit shined and polished. And um, the axle, lots of brake cleaner, lots of scrubbing around. Um, if you're unsure yourself about how clean this is, it's always a good idea to start running magnets in here and you know all these spots you can't really get at just to make sure all of this is clean on the inside of these and everywhere else because uh, if you don't have it clean enough your magnet will pick it up and then you know I'm going to start pressing these bearings in now you just got a pipe you got to make sure that it'll go on the inner race you don't want anything touching the outside here you want to get a good amount of tonnage on here to make sure that sucker's all the way down on here. Most of the time, just tightening this nut up, it's not going to tighten that thing down right. This one, I'm just going to use uh, the old race. Uh oh. This is a pretty huge race. I don't have an installation tool big enough for this thing, so I gotta put this in with a brass drift. I got a brass drift for this. I wish I had a bigger one. I think it's here somewhere. Yeah, that's in there. I'm gonna give it a few good whacks just to make sure. Makes real pretty work of your brass drifts. Now I just gotta make sure there's no brass in here nice chunks of it get all that out I'll get a blow gun after it too after I get that other race on the other side in this one's gonna be a little nicer to me because I actually have a tool for this one of these okay now that I got that in need a new crust sleeve on your pinion stick that on there you want to lube this stuff up, now is a good time. I put a little bit of gear oil on it, not much at all. A little bit goes a long way and this stuff gets oil in it real fast. So, stick the pinion in like this. I'm going to put this bearing on. I'm just going to load these bearings for right now. Use an old nut. And it won't go on. This thing don't like me. It's got a big shoulder on the nut. I don't really want to use the new nut. But I'm going to use this just to start it, I think. I had to make a socket out of some Chinese junk I had laying around. So I can get this aftermarket nut to work. Now you want to run this down, you don't want to run it down all the way so it's zero, you still want to have a little bit of play in there. I just want to get it in far enough to use my factory nut because I, I don't want to wreck the end of this because this is a lock nut. So I only want to use this once so I didn't screw it in all the way. Now I can use this one for now. See like if you look, you get still a little loose. I want to just make it so it's just a little bit tighter and then I can take all this back apart again. This isn't going in any farther with my impact. These crush sleeves, to get them to crush initially, it, it, it really takes a hell of a lot of force. So that impact isn't working for me. I got a big long pry bar I just ran through here and it goes all the way up in between the leaf spring. Getting it to go. I'm gonna leave it right there for right now. Oops. I just took up the play. There's almost no play, but it spins really easy. Oh, there it is. There's still a little bit in there. 
Now I'm going to replace this nut with the other one and I'm going to put that seal on. Normally I put sealant on a lot of these but this has got rubber on it so you don't need to. Okay I put a little lube on this. I put some lubricant on this too. Okay now I'm going to run this nut down my new new nut. I'm going to do the rest of this by hand. I could still feel it's a hair loose which is good. You're supposed to be able to get an inch pound torque wrench and get about 15 to 35 inch pounds of torque turning torque on this thing. Then you know it's preloaded right and you can only go a little at a time because once you go down you can't go back. So this is a one shot deal and if you screw it up you, got, you just got to get another crush leave and do it all over again. I got it. See that's 15. I can turn this up to 30. So it's right in between 15 and 30 inch pounds right now, so it's perfect. It's right about 20. Go for this bucket of fun. I did lightly oil this, the bearings. So for right now I just want to toss this up in here. You don't want to get these tight, I'm just snugging them up a little bit. See how way loose that is. Now for these axle nuts, for these, these adjusters, I'm going to try this without measuring anything and just, just, just put it back together the way I took it apart and see where I'm at, just to see how close I am. I'm going to give this two turns. And I'm going to run over to the other side. That's how far I got. Not quite two full turns. These are 75 foot pounds, these adjusters. So, yeah, I'm just over the two turn mark with the 75 foot pounds. I'm just going to measure the backlash now and see what I got. I don't need to measure this, it's too tight. I got nothing. So I gotta I gotta loosen up this side and tighten up that side until I get this adjust until I get this lash right. Okay, I got about six thou. So I got I got I got both of these torqued down. No, no, I just got to tighten these down to 100 foot-pounds and make sure I still got my, my sixth owl. That's good. Yeah, I tightened them up to 100. I'm right at 5 thou, which is right at the bottom of the clearance specs. So it's perfectly tight. Now I can put these in. I put a little bit of gear oil on there. Not much. Use a fairing installer. Some people use Permatex for these seals. I don't. I use the brown goo. This stuff. Number one or number two. This stuff is really good for seals. Yeah, you just need a little bit. I put a little bit on there and it's still overkill. There, do the same to the other side. I can go ahead and put these on. The lock adjusters. These get torqued to like 10 foot pounds. Now it's time to take the, take the pin out. And I can slide the axles in. Okay, I got that one in so I can take a clip. I can stick it in the groove for the axle and Ugh. 
push it into the side gear. Do the same to the other side. Yeah, why are you stuck? Stuck. There it goes. Put this pin back in. I gotta pull this axle out a little more. There we go. I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite on this bolt and uh, I'm going to look for my 8mm wrench and tighten this down. Now for the differential cover, you just want to, I just use Ultra Gray. There's some anaerobic sealer you can use for differentials if you want, but this seems to work fine. So um, just put about an 8 inch bead on there and uh, there's kind of a trick to this. You don't want to push it on the cover. You just want to kind of hold it up here and start these bolts without pushing it down. And then once you get all the bolts started, then you can screw this thing in. And I'm going to snug them down. I'm going to start in the middle. I could fill this up with fluid. It takes uh, almost three quarts apparently. They tell me uh, 75 140 is the right stuff for this. Nice expensive junk. That's all I need. You want to level with the hole? I'm going to let this dribble out for as long as it takes. It's pretty much done dribbling so I can put the plug back in. I think I'll ask the guy if he wants emergency brakes later. Everyone I've met so far says no, they don't want their emergency brakes. If he wants them bad enough, I'll take this all apart and give them some emergency brakes. Almost every vehicle this old in Minnesota, they don't even work. Unless it's a manual transmission because those people actually use them. There, do the same to the other side. Looks like I'm down to a drive shaft. Torque to be creative. I don't know. I haven't looked it up. You look it up if you care. I don't care. Uh, as long as it works, uh, that's a job. I just got to put tires on it. I'm done.